Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. Due to popular demand, today we're going to learn about the Gibson Dove, this one being from 2011 in the uncommon black finish. So to start things off, let's go ahead and learn the history of the Dove. The Dove was first introduced in 1962 as kind of a competitor to the Martin D style acoustics, and it was Gibson's second attempt at doing that this one being the more fancy model out of the two. And before we talk any more about Gibson acoustics, we need to understand the four kings of the Gibson flat top world. These are the four guitars that you have to know in the Gibson acoustic world. There's the J45 and the SJ200 or J200, depending which year you're talking about. So the J45, it's like the working man's guitar. A lot of famous people have used them. It has its own unique sound. But then over here, you get the fancy boy, the SJ200, the king of country. There's a lot of cowboys that have slung those guitars, but you can use them for a whole bunch of stuff. And hey, get this video to 100,000 views and 2,500 likes, and I'll review and demo the newest vintage looking one that Gibson just came out with. So those are your two rounded ones, and then you get your squares. That's what the Dove belongs to. It's always the Gibson Dove versus the Gibson Hummingbird. You have to choose a side. You can't like both. <laughs> I'm in the Dove camp. I find the Doves to be way more attractive. But did you know that they're actually vastly different guitars? So the Hummingbird came first. And when it was first introduced, it was the second most expensive guitar after the SJ200s. But then, once again, 62, the Dove came out and took its place for that. And the Dove was initially meant to be like a blending of the Hummingbird and the J200, so, you know, it's kind of got some aspects from each of those. But they get their names because of their pickguard designs. And for many, 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 many years. I thought that was the only difference because just looking at it, they've got the same inlays. They've got the same fretboard material. They have the spruce top. It just looks like you have a dove on this one and you got these little dove mother of pearl inserts on your bridge. But other than that, they look very similar. Are they the same? No. So hummingbirds actually have the traditional Gibson scale length, 24 and three quarters, and they have a mahogany back and sides with a mahogany neck. However, the dove actually has the fender scale scale length, 25 and a half. So it's a longer scale length, making it a completely different feeling guitar. The tone woods are also different. It still has the same spruce top, but they use maple back and sides on these guys. And the original 60s doves still have the mahogany necks, but it's around the late 60s, at least by 1971, they were pretty well all converted over into a maple neck as well. So when you're talking a modern day dove, you can automatically assume you've got a maple neck. And doves have had other spec changes over the years, like in the mid 60s, they actually had a metal tunematic bridge instead of this style that you see right here. Collectors, they don't seem to like those as much, but I love the mid 60s doves because of their cool truss rod cover. I mean, take a look at that. So beautiful and elegant. It's got a white center, it says dove, and then you look at this one and it, it's got nothing. What's that about? And traditionally, there are two colors for the dove. You get natural, which is what I always think of when I think a beautiful vintage dove, and you can find a cherry sunburst. Sometimes the cherry fades into a wacky tobacco finish, but you know, they just kind of got their own vibes there. And in modern day, you can custom order whatever color dove you want. But what's the story with ebony? Who? in their right mind would want an ebony dove. I mean, you're covering over all the flamage and quiltage that you can get in a maple back and sides and a maple neck. Well, the reason for dove ties in with our October theme. I'm going to try to do like all signature guitars or kind of wacky combined guitars this month. And people like ebony doves because of Elvis. And the whole story behind that one is Elvis's dad custom ordered it for him because he had just become a black belt in karate. So that's why they went with this black finish. Now his has other custom attributes and Gibson has reissued that guitar in a few different variations but his also had his name on the fretboard. But besides the Elvis Dove and like the Dove Performer model, there's actually a version that takes this fancy guy and makes it even fancier. It's called the Doves in Flight model. Now, in my opinion, I think it looks like trash in comparison to the original Doves. It's an example of going too far over the top, but hey, if you like the design, you like the design. That's just my own personal opinion. 
But instead of a sitting dove right here, they have a couple of them flying. You've got some wheat going on. You got the dove inlays on the fretboard. You get it on the headstock. Instead of just binding and whatnot, you get abalone trim on top of it. So you get that in the rosette, you get it along the binding. It's just not my favorite look. I would much rather just have regular binding like this, but if you like to stand out, the doves in flight is something for you. And most modern doves can be plugged in like this guy. They'll have an LR bag system in here. Vintage doves, no, no such luck on that. So that's kind of like a quick rundown of the Gibson Dove. The main thing to remember, 25 and a half inch scale length, and it's a semi-fancy boy. But to learn a little bit more about this one, let's go ahead and throw it on the workbench and take an individual look at its parts and specs to see how this 2011 version was created. Inside the Ebony Dove. You know, not a lot to take apart and look at here, but it's nice to see one up close and personal anyways. So if you get it in the light just right, you can see all those little impressions. That's not necessarily a defect in the finish. What you're seeing is the spruce top underneath it, so it's not like finish checking or anything. The lacquer just kind of sinks into that. But there's something beautiful and majestic about a pure black dove. There's a simplicity to this that does look pretty nice. But these have seven ply binding all along the body. Makes it kind of look like a black Les Paul custom in that aspect. And then you get the rosette here around the sound hole. Looks like you get a three ply and then a seven ply right there. And then moving on to the beautiful dove pick card. This is what made me fall in love with the dove. I mean, sure, the little dove wings right here on the bridge, they're cool and whatnot, but it's not as cool as the pick card itself. Do yourself a favor and take a look at some of the 60s ones, the way that they've aged, the mother of pearl that they use for the dove and that. It's simplistic. You got your little flowers, you got the leaves. It's just sitting on a branch saying, hey, I'm super fancy, love me. But your bridge is pretty simple. What you're seeing here is the piezo element. You put your saddle on top of that and then that's how that all works. So right here along the edge is your volume control for that. And it doesn't appear that this system has any type of like a tone control or anything, so it's just volume. And that's how I'll be demoing this one. I'll just plug it in directly to my audio interface. That seemed to work pretty well last time. But diving in here, we can see our serial number. That one dates it to 2011 on the 75th day of the year. And 032, this one was made in the Bozeman, Montana plant. They moved the production of their acoustics there in 1992. So kind of around the same time that they started the custom shop, which was late 1993, so things were changing. Looking inside, we can see all the maple wood grain, so that's definitely a maple side and a maple back. And despite this being a black finish, you can still see that they use some slightly figured wood. You can kind of see some of that figuring coming through. Not so much on the sides, so they might have skimped out on that for this ebony finish. But it looks like the back would have looked pretty okay. But here you can see your bracing and whatnot. Now if you remember, when I unboxed this thing, the battery came undone. And I attached it again down here because I could not find where it was supposed to go. Now that I'm looking in here, I'm betting it was supposed to go right here. Even though I love the doves, and that's why I wanted to review and document the Frank Hannon Love Dove. What a silly name, I love it. I've never been that big of a fan of Gibson acoustics. They're very boomy and bassy, which is good if that's what you're going for, but I've always found Taylors are a little bit better all around instruments because I've only ever owned three doves in my life. This one, a 69 Dove and a 1994. Well, these guys are about 16 inches at your lower bout and about 12 across the chest and approximately four inches deep with a rosewood bridge spruce top maple back and sides this one does have a maple neck but it's multi-piece so we'll have to take a look at that with a rosewood fretboard another thing i love about these gibson acoustics the square shoulder ones are these split parallelogram inlays very similar to what you'd find on like the eds 1275 double neck guitars but another interesting fact is that these do not get fret nibs in current production. But there we go. We can see it's supposed to be 25 and a half. Looks more like 25 and a quarter to me, but hey, what do I know? As far as the nut width, we get 1.72 inches, which increases to 2.10 at the 12th. First fret neck depth, 0.88 inches, which by the 10th increases to 0.91. So a rather slim feeling neck. As far as our headstock goes, here's what your truss rod looks like. You can see through to the maple neck right there. And the truss rod cover is just blank on this one with your Gibson Mother of Pearl logo and your crown. 
And this one has Grover tuners. Now, if you're curious why I left the G string on, it's because I've already replaced that when I first glued that battery pack back in here. The string just randomly broke on me. So we're going to replace all of those because kind of a funny story here. You know, Elvis's black dove was a gift to him from his dad. This is actually going to be gifted by a mother to her 20 year old son very soon. So that's where this one's going to end up. Something about black doves. It's always about generosity. Moving on to the back, this also has the seven ply binding, which runs along all the edges here. But something else to notice is that this does have a heel cap and that is also multi-ply. It appears to have three layers, a small white, small black, and then a large white. That's something I've never noticed about a dove before. And then you get whatever this thing is. I'm not really sure what they're called. It's kind of like a checkered board pattern, just something to make these things look extra fancy. Now, normally you get the flame figuring back here and that kind of helps make it look fancy and hide the center seam. But since it's just black, you know, it's kind of an interesting vibe. And the edges, um, not, nothing too much to talk about these guys. Now moving on to our maple neck. This is actually a five piece. You can really tell it when you get to the headstock, you can see the seam lines. So maple, walnut, maple, walnut, maple. So this would have looked quite fantastic had they had left it natural. So you can see all that cool figuring and whatnot. Thankfully, you don't really see those witness lines on the neck. It's mainly just on the headstock for whatever reason. If you want to get technical, you could say it's seven pieces because you do have the two wings on the edges of the headstock. But if you're ever curious why we call them five piece or three piece necks, it's because the neck does not have wings. So you don't count the wings in the pieces. But they also stamp the serial numbers right here on top of the little batch that you see inside of it. And these are just regular Grover tuners. Acoustic guitars always surprise me of how they can take just as much tension as they do just right here. But if you're wondering how you plug this thing in, it's the bottom strap button. This thing doubles as your output jack. But all said and done, this thing weighs about five pounds. So let's go ahead, plug it in and hear how it sounds.
Now that we know all about the Gibson Dove, what are my final thoughts on this particular one? I was not a fan of the direct-in piezo signal. Now, most people aren't just recording direct-in, they'll have a nice little amplifier, but I don't have one of those yet. But compare this video to the Last of Us 2 Taylor guitar that I just did with their expression system. I recorded both of these the exact same way, and that one didn't quite sound as thin and tinny. So I think that leaves a little bit to be desired on this particular one. However, you know, once you switch over to a mic'd example, yeah, that's where it's at for these Gibson acoustics. They're very deep and rich sounding. Maybe not so good for the high end stuff, but if that's what you need within your recording, this is the guitar that you want. So it was fun to finally get to check one of these out in my current review style. I had fun with it. I think if I was going to design my perfect modern day dove, I would want the black top because I think it looks really classy and it pops the dove. But I would rather have the back and sides still be a natural color so we can still see all the beautiful flame. Go ahead and do the natural neck, but I would want the Klusen waffle back tuners. And I would want the fancy dove truss rod cover and make the headstock smaller like the original ones. Troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed taking a look at this dove. As far as the black light test goes, you know, the pick guard actually looks pretty cool. I like the way that the flowers fluoresce, and then it kind of looks like you got a big full moon in there. But other than that, not too much going on on this nine-year-old guitar. Oh, sweet. What on earth is that? Now, this is probably like a capo or something that was just on here, but you can actually see the pieces of the neck. What? Why? Why Why is that a phenomenon that's happening? I have never seen that before. That's really cool. The wood must be fluorescing, maybe. So thank you, Troglodytes, for tuning in today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.